Hi, my name's Hayden and today we're going to be talking about CSS fonts. You probably haven't thought a lot about CSS fonts and in particular, so far the most we've covered is that if you have a particular span, you can come along and change its font family. We've also played around with a few other things like font size, font weight, text decoration, things like that. But today we're going to focus on just extending our knowledge slightly in two particular areas, which is the font family and the font size. So firstly, on the font family, we mentioned earlier that the font family comes from the operating system. And no matter what your computer you're on, you should be able to look up the fonts on that computer. So I'm on a Windows machine right now, and I can actually see just by opening up my settings, all the different fonts that are on that Windows machine. And if I go and find Arial, for instance, you'll see that um, Arial has a whole bunch of different font weights here, like bold and bold italic and bold, narrow bold italic and black and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, it also has a very different font sizes and it gives you samples of all of these things. So it's actually the operating system providing this information. And that's why um, when the web browser loads a page with a font, such as let's look at agency FB and see how this looks. Usually you want to use quotes when there's a, um, a space in the name. So, you know, agency FB is there and it's like, um, hey, I am a font. Now, one thing you have to be really careful with is when you select a font, you either need to make sure that that font is nearly certainly installed on everyone's computer, or alternatively, you need to have the font installed yourself. And this is another kind of last decade tech that's uh, existed where you can simply go to Google Fonts, which is just a website um, with a bunch of free fonts, and you can find a font you like, and you can actually kind of package it up in your web page so that it's not relying on the person who's using your website's computer. So let's have a look at this font, Baby, Lon Baby Lonica. Interesting. So watch what happens when I type in Baby Lonica here. The web page doesn't really do anything with it. In fact, it kind of ignores it, which is why it defaults back to Times New Roman. So you think, oh, okay, well, I really, I really like that font. I'd really like people to use it. So what you can actually do is you can actually download that font, right, which will give you a zip file, and you can open up that zip file and extract it into your uh, folder and I'll just do that now. So you can see here, this is the zip file I downloaded and it's got this font called Babylonica regular.ttf and I can just go and drag that into my folder here. So now my folder will have that font. Now I'm just going to restart my silly little editor here because it doesn't like to work and you can see my font is right there and then you think, okay, well, how do I integrate that? So now I do maybe, and let's imagine you've forgotten. You think, oh, I remember Hayden talking about this. So you say like custom font or like import font family or something like this. Um, and we'll write CSS so that we don't get too confused. How to import fonts in CSS. And we find a really simple Stack Overflow article. And you'll see that it approaches it in a very interesting way. You actually have to define the font separately by going at font face. And then you say font family. And then I, then, um, I can call this anything I want, like Babylonica. Um, and then I need to tell it where the font comes from. And in this particular case, because my font is in the same folder, if it was in a subfolder, maybe I'd need to write it out like this, .ttf. But in this case, it's just in the main folder, so I can just write Babylonica regular. So this section here defines what Babylonica is um, by sourcing it from that file. And then when I come to use it like that, um, it knows to look that up, look that font face up. So now when I refresh the page, I get this beautiful font here. And the cool thing about this is because this font is packaged with the page, it means that anyone on any browser can get this really exciting font. Um, so, you know, if you want to build a website and you want this beautiful welcome message like this, you can just do that. You don't need to save it as an image. That was kind of the classic way things used to be done in the past was that you would, you would, you would literally have to like convert this to a PNG and then like paste it on the page. And that was bad for a bunch of reasons. It made the page slower. Um, it's bad for SEO because Google couldn't scrape what that image was, etc. So that's font family and that's custom font faces. The last thing to quickly touch on with fonts <coughs> is on um, font sizes. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways to declare font sizes. We talked a little bit about EM, but let's have a look at <coughs> the different methods. So um, it's, it's a very, this page is quite long. But essentially, they show that there's a few ways you can, you can do it by pixel, you can do it by EMs, you can do it by probably REMs, REMs, you can do it by EX, there's like a whole bunch, you can do it by percentages, 
There's lots and lots of different ways. And if you Google it, you'll see lots and lots of information on it, lots and lots of articles, but there's usually a fairly simple one that is best. And it's not pixels. Pixels is one way to do things. You pick, you know, 20 pixels, 40 pixels. Oops, that's in the wrong spot. You pick, you know, 20 pixels, 40 pixels, and that kind of scales it up. The problem with pixels though, is you're explicitly defining, you know, pixels are kind of really useful for layout because pixels literally mean a pixel on the screen. And this can be really challenging for devices that maybe have, you know, higher DPIs or accessibility options to increase the size of the text. You don't want your kind of pixel definition to like screw things around, you know? Uh, so we try and steer away from pixels because it takes the, it takes the power away from the web, web browser to solve the problem. What we prefer to use instead is usually EM. We talked about this before, um, or even better REM. So EM is, these are relative measurements and these are really important because what one EM says, if we go look at the docs, right, let's go back up the top and look at EM. EM is defined as, um, a multiplier of the font size property of the element in which it's used. So when we say 2EM, we're kind of saying two times the default font size. It's not only kind of easy to read and understand because you can be fractions as well, but it, it adds relativity to everything, which is really important because if you kind of have outer elements with, you know, bigger font sizes, then um, things just kind of trickle down. And because you're kind of saying this is two, two times the normal size, you're giving the kind of browser a chance to define what the normal size is. Though a much more common one that's being used more and more these days um, is REM. And REM is designed to, to kind of circumvent the compounding problem. Um, and what that means is that let's have a look here, right? Let's wrap this span inside a div and I'll call this div say body and everything inside that div, if I go, you know, the body's a terrible class name, but if I say here font size is 2EM, what happens now is that uh, these things basically like compound off one another. We're like, you know, so the 3EM is like three times bigger than what I should be. And what I should be is defined by the parent and the parent is already two times bigger. So you get this multiplying effect or what they call a compounding effect. Um, whereas REM is like relative EM and it is a little bit, it behaves a little bit better on pages in the sense that one EM means one times the relative size, like globally. So what this means is that you can kind of just say that the entire page has a default font size for these, these elements and REM is relative to that. Whereas EM is relative to that times whatever's happening with the parents. So REM is probably the best attribute to use generally. Um, there's probably not a large reason you'd ever want to use anything else. So stick to that. But if you're bored, you can just Google PT versus pixels versus EM versus REM. You'll see a whole bunch of, you know, blogs, articles, descriptions that like to take you through it and explain it in much, much more detail. Um, they'll often say that most are bad, some are good, and they'll generally push you towards some of these relative, uh, relative ones like EM or REM. But short story is check out REM. It's probably the way to go. Hopefully that was a, a nice little intro into fonts and gives you just that little bit more background so that you can use it more confidently.